Hey everyone, Will here. One of the things that's really annoying for geeks like me is the lack of information that's available in your car about critical information like oil temperature, coolant temperature, boost pressure, all that kind of stuff. Now, a lot of cars these days show you some of that, and this BMW is one example that shows you power and torque, but those figures aren't really that useful. And what it doesn't show you is things like, you know, your boost pressure, your oil temperature, things that are really critical to the performance of your car and the safety of your engine. So what I'm going to do today is show you how you can set up a simple gauge system like this using any mobile phone, pretty much any Android mobile phone anyway, and really integrate it into the system so that it gives you all the information that you want, but more importantly, so it becomes easy to navigate, easy to use, and integrates with the car nicely. Now a lot of you are probably already familiar with the Torque Pro application and have used it, but you may find that you have to fidget around and you know, you have to get out your phone, set it all up every time you drive, and the result is that you just end up not using it. So what I've done is I've set up this phone as a standalone device which will be mounted in the car, and when you switch on the power to the car, it just does everything for you. You can access Spotify for your music, you can access you know all sorts of different playlists and stuff, but most importantly, it gives you all the gauges that you want right there in front of you. So we'll dive into it a little bit further and I'll show you how to set it all up. Okay, so the two things that you're gonna to need to do this are firstly a Android mobile phone. You can use an iPhone for some of this kind of thing, but I find that Android just works better. So I'm using a Sony Xperia Z1, which is just an old phone that I had lying around, but pretty much any Android phone that's come out within the last five years should do the trick for you. The second thing that you're gonna need is a OBD2 diagnostic reader. Now there's two different types of these. There's Bluetooth versions and Wi-Fi versions. Now this is a Bluetooth version. The OBD Link MX is a particularly good one because it has a really high or really fast refresh rate, really fast board rate. What that means is that your gauges update nice and quickly. Now you can buy these adapters off eBay for you know 15, 20 bucks. But what happens with those ones is they tend to not read the diagnostic port so quickly. And what that means is that you end up with laggy gauges. You can also have power management issues as well. They don't go into low power mode when you're not using it. So the other factor is whether you choose a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi one. Now a Wi-Fi one sort of sets itself up as a, as a Wi-Fi host. And what that means is that you have to connect your phone to it via Wi-Fi. Now I prefer the Bluetooth system because it's pretty much a set and forget type thing. You, you pair it to the device and then as soon as you, as soon as it detects that it's present, it just connects to it. You can do that with Wi-Fi, but then when you're connected to the Wi-Fi on your dongle, you won't be able to connect to other Wi-Fi networks. So I find that Bluetooth is just a little bit more versatile. So once you've got your adapter, all you need to do is just plug it into the diagnostic port on your car. So making sure that your engine is turned off. Now the diagnostic port can be located in a few different locations on the car. You're usually somewhere underneath the um, the driver's side compartment. On this car, obviously, it's in the um, in the door sill just here. So all we do is we just plug that in, make sure that it's plugged in securely, and we'll see it powers up straight away. So you can see I've got the power light and the Bluetooth light blinking. Once the Bluetooth connects, that'll stay on solid, and then you'll get a host and OBD. So that's the host light is when it's communicating with the phone and the OBD light is when it's communicating with the car. Now the car's off at the moment, so it's obviously not communicating. So that's all you need to do for your um, for your Bluetooth adapter. All right, so before we begin, there's a couple of criteria that we need to cover just around the basic setup of how we want this thing to function inside the car. Now, as I said in the introduction, we don't wanna to have to go through menus and load up the right apps every single time we get in the car, otherwise we'll end up just not bothering. So the first criteria is that we need some smart power management. Now. I don't want to have to plug in to all sorts of different things on the car every single time. Um, I don't want to be plugging into headphone jacks, I don't want to be plugging in USB cords, all that kind of thing. So what I've devised is a system that you can just basically mount the phone in the car and just have it work automatically. So the first step to that is if the phone is off and we want to, we start up the car so we apply power. So we'll, in this case, we'll pretend that we're applying power. So we'll under the little USB port here. Now one of the cool things about this phone is it actually has a magnetic little mount there, so I'll be able to leave this in the car permanently once it's mounted. Now I'm not actually gonna cover the mounting in this video because I want this video to be generic so that anybody can apply it to any car. So I'm gonna do a separate video about how I mount it in my actual car. But you can see here we've got the power on in the car. We plug the USB in, so as if we were switching on the car, applying power, and you'll see the phone wakes up and automatically goes to the Talk Pro app and loads my gauges. Now the gauges aren't functioning at the moment obviously because the engine's off, but you can see when we apply the power, 
it starts up the phone, wakes up the screen, and opens my apps. Now the next important thing is when we switch off the car, obviously we don't want the phone to be drawing battery power off its own battery. Uh, we want it to be drawing power from the car exclusively. And we also don't want the screen to be lit up, obviously, when we switch off the car because we don't want it to be visible from outside when the car's locked. So you switch off the car, you lock the car, and the cigarette lighter port shuts down. So we disconnect the power effectively. And I've set this so after 10 seconds, it should go to sleep. There you go. So that gives you a nice little exit scenario. It stays, stays awake while you're getting out of the car. And then as soon as you get out of the car and you're gone, it, it switches itself off. So to achieve that, there's a couple of things we need to do. So we'll start at the very beginning. Now, one of the criteria for this is I didn't want the phone to have to be routed and I didn't want to have to, you know, hack the operating system to make it do what I want to do. So this system that I'm going to show you works completely independently of any hacking or anything like that. All you need to do is just install a couple of apps, which are all available off the shelf. So the first app that you need, and we'll go into our apps list here, is an app called Llama. And what it is, is it's an automation program. And all you need to do is just go to events. And you can see here, I've got an event for power off and an event for power on. So I've said when charging using battery, or sorry, power off. So power off when using battery. So that's the phone's battery. Delay for 10 seconds. So that's the delay that we talked about. And then enable airplane mode. So in air airplane mode, turns off Bluetooth, turns off you know Wi-Fi, turns off cellular. I actually do have a SIM, well, I'm going to have a SIM card in this phone as well, so I can use things like Spotify on the go. And then it kills the talk app, which is important because sometimes if you leave the talk app running, when you, when you shut down the car, it can actually cause an error to come up with communication on the dash and you'll get a check engine light. Uh, it doesn't appear to happen on my BMW, but it did used to happen in my BRZ. It used to throw an error and it actually put the car into limp mode. So I had to go in and clear the fault every time. So that was an important one. Now, so we're killing, the, so we're, we're delaying for 10 seconds. We're switching on airplane mode, which should kill the connection to the car. Um, so that should make it safe. But just to make absolutely sure, we're killing the talk app as well. And then we're turning off the screen. So the way we actually do that, so the condition is when it's using battery power. So in the absence of external power and the actions. So the condition is what causes the event. And then the actions are what it does when the event is triggered. So it turns on airplane mode, it kills the talk application, and it turns the screen off. Okay, so the second event that we're working with here is the power on event, which is when the phone is charging. So what that means is any time that power is applied to the phone from an external source other than the phone's internal battery, these things will happen. So we go into it. So event name is power on, enabled, yes, don't need to worry about advanced. So the condition is when it's charging from any source, so any source of power will cause this to happen, and the actions are turn off airplane mode, so that switches on your 4G, your Wi-Fi, and your Bluetooth, turn car mode on, which we probably don't really need to worry about, but I just find it helps with screen orientation, turn the screen on with full brightness, and launch the talk app. Now you're probably thinking, what about the lock screen? So the next app that we're gonna look at is actually taking care of that. So that's the Llama app, and basically that's just your power management. So that causes those events to take place. So that's all you need to do with the Llama app. The next one is, and we're just gonna find it in the menu here, No Lock. So it's just another app from the App Store, or from the Play Store rather, No Lock. Locking disabled, locking enabled locking disabled. So all that does, you switch that on, it stays active even if you reboot the phone. So you never need to touch it again. You just set it and forget it. So what that means is when the phone powers up, it doesn't go to a lock screen. It just goes straight to the um, to the apps. What would happen if you didn't do that is the Llama app would launch the application in the background, but you'd still have to swipe every single time to unlock it. So that's as simple as that for your screen lock. The last app, and now this one is you know, this one's up to you how you want to do it. I wanted to do a little bit more with my phone than just um, than just talk. So I've got YouTube installed. I've got Spotify installed. I've got WeatherZone Plus installed for my weather reports, as well as Google Maps as well for live traffic because my car, although it has navigation, it doesn't have live traffic. So I can use Google Maps for live traffic as well. Now, if you want to have your email and Facebook and all that kind of thing on here, then you can do that as well. I don't want this phone because its sole purpose is just a car 
thing. I don't want it popping up with notifications all the time. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at is the actual launcher that's on the phone. So you don't need to do this. If, you, if you're happy with just running Talk, then all you need to do is what we've covered already. In my case, I wanted to have Maps, Talk, Weather, and Spotify as well, because my car, although it does have navigation built into it, it doesn't have live traffic. And um, I don't like using my phone to play music because it's just it's just cumb cumbersome. So I like to have this phone actually controlling the music in the car. So what I've done is I've installed this launcher app, which just gives me a nice interface rather than the standard Android home screen. And you can see that it also shows you speed and the time, that kind of thing as well. So we'll go down to the Play Store, find it, there it is. And it's called Car Launcher Pro. Now this, I think it would cost me, I think it was $4.50 Australian. So, you know, not an expensive app. And that's fully configurable. So what you can do is you can tell it various different conditions. So whether you want it to re read your speed, how you want the interface to look. Um, in this case, I've switched it on so it keeps the screen on when it's in car launcher mode. It hides the navigation bar, or well, notification bar rather. So if you flick down from the top, you get the, the notification bar. You don't need that the rest of the time. So I've just switched it off. Um, and the various different settings which you can configure to your own liking there, um, color and that kind of thing. So there's not too much to this. Um, it pretty much does what it does. You just add in via here, you just add the apps that you want to list. But what this does is it gives you a nice interface. So if you do want to change from the talk app, so say we're in the talk app, we can press home, it takes us to our nice launcher and then we can launch our music, that kind of thing. So that's all set up and ready to go. Okay, so the next thing we need to do with our phone is actually pair it to the car. So to do that, obviously it depends via phone. So you go to settings, you go to Bluetooth, and then you just, obviously you need to pair it to your OBD link or whatever your Bluetooth device is that you're using and also pair it to your car as well if you're wanting to use things like Spotify for your music, that kind of thing. If you don't, if you only want to use it for your, um, for your engine management, then you don't need to bother pairing it to your car. So if your car doesn't have Bluetooth, it doesn't matter. It's not going to stop this from working. It just means that you can't stream music. So that's all set up and ready to go. The other thing that we'll want to do as well while we're in settings is go down to our sound and notification. And you see I've turned off ring completely, turned off alarm volume completely. Our media volume still needs to be up because if we want to listen to music through Bluetooth, we'll need that up. But the most important thing is vibration is turned off and startup sounds turned off here. Notification light is turned off. And that stops the little LED light in the top of the phone from flashing. Now different phones will have different settings for this. Uh, this particular phone does have the setting in there to switch it off natively. If you don't have that setting there, there's a there's an app called Led Me Know, L E D Me Know, in the um, in the Play Store, which allows you to disable the um, the light that way as well. So there is a way around that if you need to do if you needed to do it not through settings. Um, so that's that set up. So then the phone's pretty much ready to go now. So the next step is just setting up Talk. So. As you can see here, I've got a couple of different gauges and I've got set up different pages as well. And I've, I've drawn nice dials that match the look of my car. Now you can, you can design this however you want. And um, you can see there it's throwing up an error because my engine's not running at the moment. So it's unable to detect the ECU. But what I've done is I've got my boost. I've, I've set it up basically. So it's, it's showing me all the information that I can't get natively on my car. So I've got boost pressure there, oil temperature, coolant temperature, which are the three things that I like to monitor. You, I don't think that you can do oil pressure with this car. Some cars you can, some cars you can't. Can't. It just depends on the sensors that you have on your car. Now here I've got my air fuel ratio measured and my engine load. So what, and what that's doing is that's actually graphing. So if I start up the car a bit, little bit later, I'll show you exactly how that works. But what it'll do is it'll show you the air fuel ratio over time. So you can see how it varies. And that's great because it means if you're planting your foot and you're doing a launch, obviously you don't want to be looking at your air, flow, your air fuel ratio while you're doing that, but then you can come back when you lift off and actually have a look at it and see what it did. So if you scroll down, I've got my intake temperature, my ambient air temperature, my voltage, my trip distance, and my trip time. Um, and then again, it's just personal preference how you want to set this up. You can put whatever you want there. And then on this one, I've got my intake temperature, which is, um, again, monitored over time. You can see a little spike there. That's just because it's it's glitching because it's not connected to anything at the moment. 
but that's a good way to measure heat soak. So if you're sitting in traffic, you can see the intake temperature rising and rising and rising and rising. And then when you start moving again, it'll fall off. So that's just an interesting thing to do there. And then I've got my air fuel ratio again on this page. So this is the target air fuel ratio. So it's telling, this is what the ECU is telling the engine to target. And then that's the measured air fuel ratio there. So obviously the target and the measured should be pretty close to each other. If you see a big variation, then you'd know there was a problem. So to set these up, all you need to do is just, we'll go to a, an, area, an area here and we'll just tap, go add display. You choose which display type you want. So say we want to have a needle and then you just choose which monitor you want it to be. Now on some cars you might have, I know on my BRZ I had issues with the oil temperature didn't work. And what you need to do in that case is you need to put in a custom um, a custom PID, which actually tells Torque what value in the ECU to look at. Okay, so that's how you set up the actual gauges. Now, if you plug your phone into the um, into your computer, you can actually modify the way it looks. So I've actually installed a theme, and we'll go back to the home screen and show you. I've installed a theme called Ignition Torque Theme, and then what I've done is once that theme's loaded. I've plugged it into a computer and you'll see when you plug it into your computer there's a folder called dot talk. You go into that folder there's a bunch of JPEG and PNG files and we'll go back to talk again. Yeah, where are we? You can actually modify them again. So what I've done is I've modified the background and I've modified the gauges just added that little M logo there as well and you know just tweaked it. But again it's it's personal preference. But yeah, if you plug the phone into your computer, you can modify the files through that talk folder. And again, the phone doesn't need to be hacked and you're not actually hacking the software package to do that. All you're doing is just modifying the image file. So it's very simple to do. And the best way to learn how to do that is to just play around with it and tweak. You can't really break anything. Okay, so there's a couple of other things that you just need to configure quickly while you're in talk as well. So you go to settings set up your vehicle profile. Now this just tells the app exactly what you're driving and it bases a couple of your calculations off these off this configuration. So things like your your um, fuel usage, that kind of thing. So you go edit, set your name, doesn't matter what the name is, engine displacement, weight, type of fuel, fuel tank capacity, how much fuel's in there at present and it'll it'll calculate off that. What your maximum RPM dial is, or what your red line is volumetric efficiency and pretty much everything else is just stock standard. So you hit save. And the other thing you need to do as well is just tell talk in settings here, general preferences, hide the status bar, switched on. And then I have it set up to start in dashboard as well. So always go to dashboard. What that means is that when the app launches, you're not being taken, you go straight to your actual gauges, you're not being taken to this initial screen. Because again, we don't want to have to press buttons and you know launch menus every single time we go in. But you can see if you back out of your real-time information, you can read fault codes, you can view your map, you can even do data logging as well. So if we go graphing, you can monitor as a scatter chart or whatever you want. So you can different type of chart, line chart or scatter chart. In this case, we're looking at, whoops, we're looking at engine RPM. We can change it to whatever we want versus speed. So say we wanted to look at our air fuel ratio versus boost, something like that. So we scroll down and we just find it in the list. I'm not going to go through it now, but yeah, if air fuel ratio versus boost is a classic one. You might want to, you want to, might want to measure exactly how your air fuel ratio is changing relative to the amount of boost that you're running. Then you just hit start logging and it'll start going. So what we'll do now is we'll actually connect it up to the car, get the engine running and show you exactly what it does. So I'll back out of everything for now. So we'll back out of the app. And we'll start up the engine. Right, so engine's running, switch on the phone, launch torque, there we go, connected to ECU. So you can see we've got a vacuum showing up here, oil temperature, coolant temperature, you can see there that line graph of our air fuel ratio. 
voltage obviously we haven't moved anywhere so our trips not reading but you can see our intake temperature and air temperature there and our target versus um, measured air fuel rate as well in our intake temperature. So you can see there's a spike there when you first load it and that's just a bug in the app and then it goes back down to where it is. So if we're, as we're sitting here, we would actually see that intake temperature rising up as the, um, as the car sits warming up. So, and you can see our target and our measured air fuel ratios are pretty much spot on now. All right, so if we go into Spotify, we can see here, it launches straight in, hit play. Coming through our sound system. Now it's a little bit sketchy because my Wi-Fi connection is really bad there, but you get the idea. So that's pretty much it. And obviously you can go into your weather zone apps, you can go into whatever you want, measure those kinds of things. But um, as you can see, it's pretty clean. It does the job, measures everything you want it to measure, and it does it all without any stuffing around. So hopefully you found that interesting. Now the next video, I'm gonna actually mount this in the car and show you how I did it in this car. But hopefully if you're, if you're just after a generic video showing you how to set this up, then this has been useful for you. If it has been, as always, like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.